you seen that tower on the strip all lit up? You can see it for miles. Hi there. Welcome to the Westside Co-op. I'm Clayton Etienne. Let me know if you have any questions. It might not look like much, but it's what keeps us Westside locals independent. We started it a few years ago. I admit we had a lot of trouble at first, but eventually we got some help from Tom Anderson with the followers. We're finally to the point where the co-op members can start making money from sales instead of just breaking even. Well, I've lived in Nevada all my life. Started out in New Reno, but headed down here as soon as I got the chance. If you can believe it, things are even worse back home. The whole city's still run by crime families. It used to be the Mardinos and Wrights. Now it's the Wrights and Van Graffs. Seems like things never got better. Anyway, that's all behind me now. All right. See you later. And now, I'd like to play one of my very favorite songs for you. I got nothing you need. If it's ass you're looking for, talk to pretty Sarah. Me and my partner, St. James, work salvage around Westside. That's all. Because it's his name. He may be high strung, but he's all right. Paul's his half a scrap, which is all I need. Yeah, beat it. Why are you talking to me, man? I'm trying to relax here. Got it? Me and Dermot work salvage around New Vegas. What do you even mean? He's Dermot. Dermot knows how to work salvage better than any man I ever met. Doesn't go asking questions all day, neither. Fuck off. I'm glad mean son of a bitch is on our side. Yeah? What is it? Catch you later, then. Welcome to the Casa Madrid. If you got an itch need scratching, you came to the right place. Just watch how you treat the merchandise. Three flavors to choose from. Sweetie, Maud, and Jimmy. Sweetie's the house favorite, for reasons that should be obvious. Maude is what you might call the discount rack. She's what a customer wears if he doesn't have the caps to afford Sweetie, or just likes them old. Jimmy's more of a specialist. I only hear good things. Most of my body is scarred all over, like a ghoul. Nobody around who'd want to screw that. No, I just run things. We don't talk about that. Next topic. I look after the only reasons anyone would want to spend any time here. I'm a pimp. All Marco does is collect rent and take a small cut of my action. He sure as hell doesn't clean the rooms. You know where to find me. If you're down on your luck and need some caps, I'd buy just about anything. Of course, I've also got plenty of things for sale, too. My grandfather opened up this shop. Took over from him when the fiends killed him. Of course. Until next time.
Sure, boss. The old man will crawl around in the dirt to keep hidden. I hear the Great Khans got massacred again. No survivors this time, though. I'm glad mean son of a bitch is on our side. Those cons got the hint. We've shown. I've heard through the locals that Nephi has passed on. I truly hope his soul finds peace. I give what aid and comfort I can. I have medical knowledge thanks to my time with the followers. I would be happy to, should you require it. You seem to be in fine health now. Poor lost souls, most of them. They thought to come to New Vegas and find their fortunes on its shining strip. But the journey is often long, and the price to enter the city is steep. Those who could not pay ended up here, hoping to earn the caps they need. Some find honest labor, but more fritter away what little they've saved on crooked gambling and cheap liquor. Still, I minister to them as I can. Farewell, friend. The Legion being wiped out at Nelson gave us some breathing room. Hopefully the brass will use that. Captain Parker, I'm in charge of this camp. This here's where folks go when their luck runs out. Drifters up from the Republic, locals that can't turn a dime, Drunken reprobates from all around. If you don't have the caps to get onto the strip, odds are you'll end up here. Well, I am a little short-staffed. Maybe you could give me a hand. Some people have gone missing from the camp lately. I haven't seen any signs of violence or heard about any feuds. They just up and vanished. And I've also got Keith and his gambling to deal with. I know that skunk's cheating folk out of their savings. I just can't prove it. Keith's a two-bit hustler. He runs a gambling operation out of his shack. Ask me, he wins way too often to be playing fair. I suspect he's running drugs, too. I just can't prove it. Maybe you can find something. Talk to him, poke around his shack, something. Some people have gone missing from the camp lately. I haven't seen any signs of violence or heard about any feuds. They just... up and left. I remember hearing some of the missing folks were doing business with Dermot and St. James, a couple of scavengers from Westside. 
Glad to hear it. See ya. Hey. Oh, hello. What can I do for you? My name's Frank Weathers. I'm a farmer, got a few hundred acres near Junktown. Well, I was a farmer. I guess I'm not much of anything now. Why does anybody? I thought I'd strike it rich at the tables, make my fortune and never have to plow those damn fields again. I just wanted to provide for my family and now they're gone. All gone. God forgive me. They're cannibals, slavers, and worse. I hear rumors they're poised to overrun the entire Colorado River Valley, and even the army won't be enough to stop them. One of the officers here, or Camp McCarran, might be able to tell you more. Caesar's Legion attacked us near Searchlight. The Rangers say they probably took my family to Cottonwood Cove. Goodbye. Greetings. Pardon my enthusiasm. I'm not accustomed to meeting so many new people, but I find you fascinating. I've tried to learn as much as possible about the surface world since our community left our home. You? Did you redirect the power stream back to our section? We thought nobody would ever manage to get past the radiation. And the ghouls. We owe you our freedom, Outlander. Please, if there's anything we can do for you. Of course. Please, take this. We carried as much useful technology as we could before our journey into the surface world. Kindly. The leaders of this fine community have accepted us among them. They gave us food and protection from the outside. Some people here seem extremely unhappy. They keep talking about getting shafted, swindled, and fucked. Apparently somebody did them ill. All the way inside the surface city with lights, the Strip and Freeside they call it. Yes, I believe that, Outlander. We owe you our freedom. We're lucky to be here, alive and well. The land's a mystery to us, but we'll find our place in it. Until soon, I hope, Outlander. Hello. I hope everyone on the surface is like you. You're the one who saved us. Thank you. I heard you talking to Horowitz. Can't thank you enough for what you've done for us.
Hey there. Fancy a game of caravan? You got it. Hey there. Fancy a game of caravan? Name's Keith. You feeling lucky? I got games of chance, games of skill, games of you name it. Wanna win a little cash? Your loss. You know how they say you make your own luck? Well, let's just say I make mine with a little extra ink on the card. Hey, it's not like I use them all the time. Mostly I keep them in my shack until I see a really fat score roll into town. Oh, I get you. Looking for a slightly more chemical thrill? Okay, I'll tell you what. I happen to keep some jet around for emergencies. Uh, 35 caps in a yours. Well, then why are you wasting my time? Come on back if you want a game. Have you seen that tower on the strip all lit up? You can see it from miles. Mm. 
I'm sure it's something. We gotta go through this again? What's it about this time? I don't know a thing about no missing refugees from that Aerotech camp. Go cry to somebody else. Yeah, well, I must have heard rumors. And, uh... Fuck you, you got nothing on me and Dermot. I hear the Grey Khans got massacred again. No sur- I said, fuck off. You're right about that. St. James, got a thief here. Ah! We gotta go through this again? What's it about this time? You got his book? Dermot, this bastard got your book. He got your book! Quietly. The Legion can... Something I can help you with, stranger? Drugs and crooked gambling? Can't say I'm surprised. Here, you've earned this. I'm gonna go take Keith into custody. If you're interested in a little extra pay, I wouldn't mind backup. Glad to have you. Let's go. Just stick close and follow my lead. Keith's a cowardly son of a bitch, but he might try something if he's desperate.
Keith, in the name of the NCR, I'm placing you under arrest for illicit gambling and the sale of unlicensed chems. Fuck you, man. I ain't going nowhere with you. Come quietly now. I don't want to have to hurt you. Why don't you go cry to your wife, then? Oh, that's right. She left your worthless stinking ass. You son of a bitch! Well, that was a bit messier than I would have liked. Is there anything else? Maybe, maybe not. I always warned him not to push my buttons. Well, ain't nobody gonna miss him anyways. Here you go. I promised you an extra reward for coming along, so that's what you get. Have you found out what happened to those missing refugees? How do you know? Did you find proof? Oh, sick bastards. Can't say I'll shed any tears for them. Here, you've earned this. Idle thumbs tend to get blown off around here. Get moving. Hungry for grub? Here's what we have available. Don't get blown up.
Nelson will serve as example. We'll bleed the ground red with anyone who opposes our peace efforts. Isn't that bomber a beauty? Thanks so much for making an old man's dreams come true. No, those aren't for outsiders to use. Leave them alone. Anything else you need? I've got work to do. Bye. I hear the cons won't trouble us anymore. That's a good thing to see, huh, boss? That loyal guy. He's getting up there in years, but he still finds a way to make himself useful to his people. If you ask me, that's better than withering away all alone or holding on to some faded piece of glory from your past. That's what I thought, too. Old history, boss. I grew up in a place called Hidalgo Ranch, just outside Mexico City. It wasn't much, just a bit of a farm, with a house for three generations of Tejadas. I wasn't the best behaved kid. I was quick with my hands, with a pistol or a wrench. And I wasn't afraid to get into fights over it. I never killed anybody, but I had my share of run-ins with the police. Mostly my family kept me in line. This was before the war. We were far enough away from Mexico City when the bombs fell that we missed the worst of it. But things got bad quick. Just a few days after Mexico City was vaporized, refugees started pouring down the road to our ranch. We helped who we could, but there were so many. Eventually, my father started turning people away before we ran out of food. Things got violent. My father and I got our guns, and we drove them off. About two dozen men came back in the night after we'd gone to sleep. They set fire to the ranch house and barred the doors from the outside. My whole family was trapped inside. I smelled the smoke, and I got myself and my little sister, Rafaela, out through a window, but everyone else. My parents, my grandmother, my two brothers, and two of my sisters all died. Rafaela and I ran. We were pursued by some of the men who attacked our home, but I was always a good shot. The ones who came after us, I killed. The rest, I left me. I had to take care of Rafaela, not throw my life away on revenge. I know that, boss. That's not what I'm getting at. I'm just getting sentimental in my old age. Anyways, forget it. Just wanted that off my chest. Nice day with him. Did you know the strip's all stirred up? Took some skills to bring down that fiend. You done good. As a matter of fact, it's funny that you'd ask. A couple nights back, I was on watch in the yard. Got myself a habit of looking all around, not just where I'd expect to find trouble. Old habit, but it saved my hide on occasion. Round about one in the morning, I spied some lights in the control tower. Now that's the third time I've spied those lights, mind you. And every time I ask about it, they tell me the place was empty. I'm just saying. Didn't look empty to me. No trouble at all. Might be nothing. A couple frisky young folks looking for a quiet place to snuggle up. That light is mighty consistent. Always there at 1 a.m. Might be worth a look. Always a pleasure. Keep yourself safe. Nelson's back in our hands. 
hope we can defend it this time. Howdy. What brings you back? Used to be a ranger. One of the first they sent out east back before we took the dam. Observation and reconnaissance. We took the lay of the land, checked out the locals, and kept ourselves inconspicuous. A couple friends of mine were the first to scout the dam. That was back in 73, if I recall. A lot of those rangers are dead now. Vegas always chewed men up. It's just a little more literal nowadays. Well, that wasn't really a matter of choice. Got myself caught by legionaries up near Malpe. They had themselves some fun with me. Mangled my hands and feet pretty good. Wasn't much good with the pistol after that. Wasn't gonna be trekking across the waste on any more long scouts either. Caesar's boys figured I wasn't going anywhere after what they'd done to me. So they didn't bother tying me up. I crawled out of there on my elbows and knees. Must have looked a sight. Then I rolled down an embankment into the Colorado. I guess I had a mind to drown rather than give Caesar's boys the satisfaction of killing me. But a couple of rangers happened to be watching from across the river. They jumped on in and pulled me out of there. Lucky break, they said. Going on six months now, but I reckon we'll be moving out soon enough. Can't talk about the details. Till then, we'll man the towers and keep an eye on the fiends. We've had more than our share of trouble from their direction. Whole thing smells of Caesar to me. Of course, that's just guesswork. But I still bet a few caps he's stirring up the locals against us. Always a pleasure. Keep yourself safe. Got a second to talk, boss? Meeting Corporal Sterling. Well, it kind of got me thinking. Here's a guy that's been beat all to hell, right? I mean, he could have retired from the service, but instead he signs back on and does what he can. You think he did the right thing? You think so, boss? Because I remember a time when a lot of people stuck to their duty no matter what. It ended with nuclear bombs falling on my hometown. After the fire, I knew my sister and I couldn't stay at Lao Lawrence anymore. The refugees still wanted me dead. They even put a bounty on me. I remember how scared Rafaela was. I told her if she came with me, we'd see the vaquero. She used to love the rodeo, especially the trick wagon. We figured maybe we could find help in Mexico City. We were young. We didn't know what had happened, really. We didn't understand about the bombs. I don't think it was as hard hit as D.C. or Bakersfield, but it was bad enough. By the time we got there, the city was a radioactive ruin. Still, the city was full of looters, already forming into the beginnings of raider tribes. Crime was bad before the war, but now it was a nightmare. We were living like scavengers, scraping by on what little food we could find, always looking for medicine for my burns. And then, of course, the radiation started to kick in, Turning me into this handsome devil you see before you. You're a poet of understatement, boss. But there were moments it was almost worth it. I still remember finding that novelty costume shop. I was just looking around for something I could slice up to wrap my burns when I saw the vaquero outfit hanging on the rack like it hadn't been touched. I took it, not like anybody else needed it, you know, and wore it back to our camp. Rafaela laughed for the first time since the bombs had fallen. It was. I started to build up a legend. Sometimes it headed off trouble, but most of the times it just started more. Young punks looking to prove themselves would come looking for me, but my eyes were sharp and my guns were quick. For a while, it seemed like we might even survive there until, until Rafaela. She went out to find some food one day. I was sick, so I stayed at our camp. I guess it must have been the beginning of radiation poisoning. Anyway, it was supposed to be safe, but some raiders happened to pass through where she was scavenging. I won't speak of what they did to her. 
when I found her body, the only way to recognize her was this funny little scar on her knee from when she was a little girl. Terrible doesn't begin to cover it, boss. I led my whole family down. First the ranch, now Rafaela. I was the last Tejada. I guess maybe I went a little crazy then. I took my guns and went back to that market. I didn't have many bullets, but I had enough. After the raiders were dead, I salvaged what I could from the store. I was tired. I just wanted to be alone forever. I left Mexico City behind. I made my way out to the Gulf Coast. Eventually, I found an old Petrochico refinery nobody had claimed. I stayed there for a little while, and I thought a lot about my life. I thought about the guns I'd lived by and what they'd gotten me. I decided my guns hadn't gotten me anything, and it was time to give it up. I took off the old Vaquero outfit and put on a Petrochico jumpsuit. The name tag said Miguel. So I started using the name myself. Eventually, I made it to Arizona. That's another story, boss. What's new? Right now, a whole lot of sitting on my keister and counting cracks in the ceiling. I wouldn't wish it on anybody. On better days, I help keep the peace. Boone and Vargas watch the road. I watch the town. Tell myself I'm doing some good. Yeah, twice. Actually, the first time, it was more like half my body. Knocked me out of the Rangers. This time, it's mostly just reminded me how useless I've gotten. Look out for yourself. What's new? A few years back, we get a tip that some Legion slavers were holed up in this burnout house a few clicks from where we were stationed. We get there and it's deserted. No sign anyone's been there. I mean, nothing. As we're leaving, I hear something behind me. I turn around and there's this kid, just skin and bone, and he's looking up at us and he's scared half to death. Been hiding in a closet. I go to grab him out of there and I notice he's holding something in his hand. Something metal. He shuts himself back in the closet, and that's when I see the grenade he's left by my feet. They do it a lot, the Legion, using kids. They know we'll hesitate. Anyway, that was the first time. Second time, I fell down those stairs in front of the motel, just in case I got to thinking I'd put it all behind me. Was. Was with them. That was back when my arm and leg used to work better. I still like to pretend I'm a ranger, though. I'll check in with the guys up at the station pretty regular on the ham radio. Sometimes they stop by, tell me they're paying their respects, the smug bastards. They haven't been responding to me last couple days. I guess they got tired of hearing me talk, but it still got me a little worried. Hell, listen to me talk, like some damn mother hen. Like what? Look out for yourself. Hey, boss. Can I ask you something? What do you think of guys like Ranger Andy? That wasn't what I meant, really. I mean, guys who have a world of experience doing what they do, but have to give it up because they're getting old and slow or too injured. Maybe, yeah, 
I guess you got a point there. Not really, boss. No. I left everything when I left Mexico. My home, my family, my name, even my face. I know it's surprising, boss, but I wasn't always this handsome. As far as the world knows, I was Miguel, and I was okay with that. I headed north for a while and ended up in Tucson. Not Tucson, by the way. Things were good there. Well, maybe not good, but better than Mexico City, anyway. I found myself a little shack and started fixing things. Oh, well, sure, boss. I was always good at fixing things. Some I fixed for the town, some I fixed for other people, some I fixed just for the hell of it. It's a better way to use your hands than killing. And even then, I wasn't getting any younger or faster. I lived there for a long time, kept it myself, didn't get into any fights. Hell, the only reason I even kept my guns oiled was professional pride. Getting there, boss. I'd been in Tucson. The locals can call it Tucson all they want, but it's Tucson, damn it. About 75 years when she showed up. Pretty thing you ever saw, boss. Maybe it was just a trick of my senile brain, but I swear she looked just like my Rafaela. Her name was Claudia. She ended up taking work at one of the brothels in town. I never went to her, of course. How could I? But I looked after her in my own way. This was a long time ago, before Caesar's Legion pacified Arizona and brought the Raider tribes to heel. A tribe came into Tucson one day. More a gang, really. Dirty Dave and his six brothers. They were looking for bullets, and I sold some to them. I figured if I did that, they'd leave town before they tore it up too much. No, boss. No, they didn't. As I was saying, I hoped they'd leave the town in peace. Instead, they decided to stop at Claudia's brothel to take the edge off. I don't know which one of them got rowdy first, but by the time I heard the screams and got my guns, it was too late. They shot up the brothel, killed four girls, and taken Claudia for their sport. I went after Dave and his brothers. They had a head start, but they slept nights. I didn't. It took me three days to catch up to them. Claudia was dead when I got there. They put a bullet in each of her eyes. I couldn't do anything except the Avenger, just like Rafaela. I charged into the middle of their camp and started firing. Two of them were dead before they knew I was there. The other five, though, they shot the shit out of me. I would have died, I think, if I wasn't so full of rage. By being a meaner old cuss than the rest of them, boss, I wanted to keep living until they weren't. So I just kept shooting until they were all dead. I was in pretty bad shape in the end, though. I don't know how long I laid there, with the sun baking me and the buzzers chomping at me. Eventually, I got the strength to start moving. Some long time after that, I managed to drag my carcass back to town. When I recovered, more or less anyways, I left Tucson and headed west. I ran into Tabitha at Black Mountain, and well, the rest you know. I swore I was done with the gunslinging life. I was too old, too slow, and too beat up to protect anyone anymore. I thought I was done forever, but after traveling with you, I realized I've always had my doubts about whether I still had what it took to carry my pistols proudly, to use them to do what's right. And now that I've been traveling with you for a while, you made me realize that I could still do that. Maybe I'm not as tough as I used to be, but my brains can make up for that. And my hands are still quick enough. It's time to put the guns back on. Yeah, I suppose you're right, boss. These balls are too old for that kind of action. I expect to be awed by your dizzy mercantile sense, boss. You really enjoy dragging me into situations where I get shot at, don't you, boss?
good call. I mean, if that's what you really want, boss. Hey, as long as you're not asking me to go back to Black Mountain, I'm a happy old man. <laughs> <laughs>